Good morning. Welcome to the services of Trinity United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are joining us here this Lord's Day. Thank you for making us a part of your life. Uh, if you're listening to us now or watching us now, uh, we also have, are available to keep these uh, recordings on our website and on Facebook and on uh, YouTube. <clears throat> and FTC will broadcast them through the week as well. So share this information with your friends uh, and neighbors. We're glad to be a part of the community effort of worship here at Trinity. You are missed in this place, but we know that God is with us in this time. A couple of announcements that I'd like to make for us this morning. Uh, it, starting on August the 12th, uh, that's a Wednesday night, we're going to start having uh, communion uh, at the steps of the steeple. And we're going to do it in a very safe way. We're going to invite you to come if you'd like and to be socially distanced uh, with your masks on. And we're going to have these prepackaged uh, juice containers with a wafer on top. And we will be giving those out uh, because I've heard so many of you talk about missing Holy Communion. And so we will start doing that weekly starting on the 12th of August, that's Wednesday. We'll also be doing an offering it to Sunday school classes, uh, and we'll start that next Sunday night, the August the 9th, that will be for the friendship class. We're still in need of a host to host us in your yard, uh, up to about 15 people. So if you can help us with that, that would be wonderful. Uh, we are so happy that uh, this past Wednesday night, uh, church Council approved one of uh, the reopening plan for our wonderful mission partner in uh, the Trinity Day School. You'll hear more about what we're going to be trying to do for them during the offering time, but we are happy that uh, our mission partners are going to be able to come back uh, with very safe procedures. Uh, Ms. Christy Downer is doing a wonderful job overseeing that and planning that. And we ask your prayers for that, church, for that uh, school as well as the staff and the students. My friends, let us worship the Lord.
pray. Abundant and everlasting God, wherever we are, wherever we worship, you are there with us. Bind our hearts together across the distance and across the time that we may be a unified, though dispersed, body of Christ, giving you the glory, honor, and praise. These things we ask in your name. Amen. And now, will our children please pay attention for our children's time. Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to see you today behind the camera, wherever you may be. We are glad that you are joining us. And today, I want to talk about where I am here in the Sanctuary of Trinity. Now, you may have been here sometime in the past. You may remember it. How many of you remember sitting with me here on these steps? And we would talk and we would listen about Jesus and about all the things that Jesus did and said, and we would tell Bible stories. This is a special place. And then, you know, as I think about this place, I look up at the ceiling, and I see all of the uh, wooden beams and, and all of the beauty that is that space up there. And even though it's a big space, I feel closer to God. And the stained glass windows, I love seeing Jesus up there and Paul and uh, John the Baptist and things that I've noticed in this sanctuary before. I, did you know that there were 12 arches that we have? About over here where Mr. Charlie is standing is an arch, and there are 12 of those. There are like 12, there were 12 disciples. I can remember when your brothers and sisters would come down the, the middle aisle carrying the, the, uh, the torches and the crucif they were the crucifer. I can remember the choir coming down before us and the congregation singing so beautifully. This is a special place because people have been baptized here and married here and we've had funerals here. We've had communion in this place. We love our church and we love that we could spend time with God in this place. But this is what I've come to know, that even as special as this place is, and you know what? We're going to be back in here. We're going to be back in this place. It may be a very different when we do, but we will be able to come back in here to worship. But even though things aren't like we want them to be, even though we can't come in to this beautiful sanctuary and experience the presence of God, the thing that I want to tell you is, is that God meets you wherever you are. You don't need a big, beautiful church like this. God can meet you in your backyard. God can meet you in that shaft of sunlight that comes through your bedroom window. God can meet you in the song of the birds that you hear outside. God is there, and you don't have to come here just to meet him. He loves you wherever you are. And so I invite you and your parents and everybody to open their heart to the presence of God in all of life. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for little brothers and sisters who have come into the world. 
Thank you for parents who love us. Thank you for those of our friends and neighbors that are around us and help us. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will help us in this time and make the sickness go away, that we can be together again. We ask this thing, these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. One of the things that I've come to know is that this church, uh, when we are gathered, but especially in this time when we are dispersed, of how much we are blessed by the music of this church, by uh, Charlie and Beth and their efforts. But I also want to point out to you <coughs> and thank especially Steve Wynn and uh, Josh and uh, 
uh, Castleberry and his family, um, I think sometimes we believe that it's just us. That it's just the four or five of us that are singing or playing. But the word that I would give you is that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're being multiplied. You're being amplified. And so that the people beyond this camera, the people on the radio, hear and are blessed in ways that you cannot see your own self. And so I thank our choir for their persistent work week in and week out. At this time, I invite you to listen to the word of God as it is read from Genesis. It's the 32nd chapter beginning at verse 22. That same night, he got up and took his two, ch- two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Penuel, saying, I have seen, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket, because he struck Jacob on the hip socket of the thigh muscle. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this, the Holy Word. Let's pray. Lord, we wrestle with your word. We seek to understand it in the depths of our soul. We seek to understand it in the conflict of our society. We seem to rebel against what you would have us do and be. Hold us tightly, O Lord in our struggles, may we be closer to you because your word is proclaimed. May the words of my mouth be amplified, be consecrated, be blessed by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You missed it if you grew up sitting in the driver's, in the passenger seat and one of your parents asks you to look in the glove compartment for the map. 
and you unfolded the map and you tried to find a place on the map. Now that necessarily wasn't the challenge. It was a right passage to be able to fold that map back up and put it in the glove compartment like it, like it was when you took it out. Since the advent of GPS and cell phone technology, many have missed the excitement of folding and refolding a map correctly. I'm glad for these newer days, but I must admit there's something about having a map in front of me of tracing the route with my finger and of circling the destination and knowing where you are and knowing where you have to go. A map is not just something stored on your cell phone or folded neatly in the glove compartment. A map is an abstract representation of the geography of human life. Somewhere in a Bible near you is a map or two of ancient Israel. You will see the names of places that God encountered God's people, places named or renamed because people witnessed God's activity there. You can circle the place names with your finger. Names like Bethlehem, Gilgal, Golgotha, and Meribah. Jacob named a couple of these places of holy encounter. One was Bethel, and the other was Penuel, which we read about this morning. At Penuel, Jacob wrestled the Lord, and Jacob named the place Penuel, as he said, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. Penuel will be a place delineated in Bible atlases for generations after Jacob. More importantly, Penuel would be a place etched in the cartography of Jacob's soul, a sacred point circled on the map of his life. Each one of us has a map of our lives. They aren't big highway paper maps. They aren't the GPS coordinates that we use. The map of our, of our lives marks the places where we live, where we work, and where we go to school. The map of our life, of our life is circled where the milestones of our lives were accomplished. It delineates the geography of our soul and how we have grown as human beings in our relationships and accomplishments. The map of your life has places marked where you go for fun, places where you go to enjoy a romantic dinner with your spouse. There are places that we circle when we were hurt or where we were wronged. There are even holy places on the maps of our lives. This place called Trinity is one of those holy places on the map of our lives. It is a place where people have experienced the presence of God, a place where God has blessed, convicted, and pardoned, made covenant and was present in a variety of ways over the decades. It is a place where people have sought God's guidance and wisdom, forgiveness and blessings through baptism. It is a place where we have commended to God the lives and bodies of our loved ones. This place of holy encounter at Trinity is no less meaningful for us than Jacob's encounter was for him at Penuel. And yet I stand here on a Sunday morning 
in Trinity's vast and storied sanctuary with less than 10 people. Since March, we have been deprived of the community of community worship in this place. We cannot sit in these pews and sense the space above us as bridged by God. We cannot appreciate the acoustics as we hear the songs of our faith reverberate from the marble and echo in praise before all eternity, before the throne of God. We cannot kneel at the, this rail as generations have done before us. We miss the extended right hand of welcome and fellowship in the aisles. And we cannot see the sunlight dancing through the kaleidoscope of these beautiful stained glass windows. We miss church. We miss meeting God in this holy place. And yet, in Jacob's naming of that wilderness place on the ford of the Japic, we are reminded that human encounters with God are not restricted to churches. Long before there was a temple in Jerusalem, long before there were houses of Christian worship throughout the world, God encountered people at the mouth of caves with a still, small voice. God was in the whirlwind. God was in the cry of a child in a manger in Bethlehem. God's nature was revealed on the shores of the Red Sea and at the ford of the Jabbok. Through a star that guided the, guided the Magi from the east. In all of these places mentioned in the Bible, God meets people in the everyday and the common of life. God is on the map of our lives. In places beyond the beautiful dark wood of this sanctuary, God meets us in the map of our lives. It was a Tuesday night after a grueling, soul-draining few weeks for me. I went to bed that night anxious and tired, worried about things in the future about which I did not have any control. You see, pastors worry too. But those worries kept me from a good sleep that night. And about the time I got to sleep, early the next morning, about 3 a.m., I was wakened by the chirp of a smoke detector. The battery was weak. Chirp. 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 I tried to count, and I could not, it did not seem, it seemed random, the chirps, but I knew that I heard it. Kathy did not hear it. Kathy sleeps so deeply, I will have to rouse her when Gabriel blows his trumpet. I knew I would get no rest until I got up and changed that battery. It was just one more frustrating thing in a long line of frustration. And so I got the ladder from storage and I went to the smoke detector I thought was the problem. It was not. And for the next 10 minutes, the ladder and I waltzed from one room to the next trying to locate the guilty chirper Finally, I discovered it was the carbon monoxide detector. And I placed the ladder down safely 
And I climbed the ladder to change the battery. And it was when I was at the top of that ladder with silence throughout the house when I had a feeling of undeniable peace come over me. It was a sense of calm assurance. Those worries melted away. I changed the battery and went to bed and enjoyed the best sleep I had experienced in weeks. I am convinced of the presence of God in a deep and abiding way at the top of that ladder early that Wednesday morning. That place is marked on the map of my life. Now, that does not mean I will trade this sanctuary for the top of a ladder at 3 a.m., nor will I rename the spot at the top of the ladder where the carbon monoxide detector is. But what it helps me do is it makes me become aware that there are other places of holy encounter with Almighty God other than at Penuel. And the, and the beautiful storied sanctuary of Trinity. My friends, God is on your map. As you move from point A to point B in your life, God will meet you when you least expect. It will be a place and a time and a feeling that you will remember the rest of your life. It may be a moment of assurance or blessing. It may be where you're called to something greater. It may be the spot where crystal clear clarity comes about your role, about your purpose, about your calling as a child of God. It may also be a spot where you wrestle with God. God is on your map. And it will be a place on the cartography of your soul. It may be your Peniel. It may be your Bethel. May you experience the blessing and presence of God in bold ways in the common and everyday experiences of your life. For the good news is God is on your map. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now, as a response to the word of God proclaimed, I invite you with your hearts and with your lips to join me in proclaiming our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. As we gather today for our joys and concerns, I uh, remind you to keep in prayer the family of Clay Louder, Clayton Louder who died last Sunday. Uh, the funeral was this past Wednesday. We also invite you to remember the family of Anna Bynum. Anna, the good and faithful former staff member here uh, who loved this church uh, so much and the people in it uh, who shaped lives here. Uh, she was quite a force of love 
Uh, she had an excellent standard for all that should be done in the name of the Lord. And we are thankful for her life among us and uh, the shape that she has given us for the years to come. We're thankful that uh, Paul Weisenstein is recovering from his COVID-19 uh, case. Uh, there have been others in our community that have done this, but have, have had this, and Paul, we are so thankful that he is doing fine now. Uh, I understand Gail is still trying to slow him down from doing too much work, but uh, we thank you uh, for continuing to remember him. Friends, there are other concerns and prayers of our hearts and of our lives. And I ask you to spend a few quiet moments with Almighty God before we have our morning prayer. Let us pray. O God of grand galaxies and microscopic protons, we grapple to understand the vastness of the universe. Among the countless galaxies and the incalculable number of suns and planets that light cannot reach in a billion lifetimes, we grapple to understand the immensity of creation. Yet there is also an inner space, the realm of subatomic matter, the realm of deadly viruses that we cannot understand, nor can we see without a microscope. You, O oh God, are the creator of the infin infinite and the infinite decimal. Lord, we struggle to know our place and purpose in this vast and in this tiny of creation. What are human beings that you're mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? And as the psalmist continues, Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them stewardship over the works of your hands. Nonetheless, we wrestle to understand our lives and our relationships with others. Like Jacob at the Jabbok, we are uncertain of what lies ahead and we worry about what lies behind us. We wrestle with you, holding on through the mysteries of the dark night, waiting for holy validation or a divine blessing to come. There are times, O oh God, when the blessing comes with a limp, for our encounters with you are not always easy or comfortable. There are many, O oh God, many who are holding on for a blessing of the Lord. Some grapple with the forces of evil and injustice, poverty and ignorance. For those struggling to breathe through the dangers of the COVID-19 virus, we pray. We thank you for the medical allies that stand with them in this battle for life. Bless those who struggle with grief. Bless us 
as we hold on. For we do not know how long the night will last. Forgive us, Lord, for failing to receive the blessings that you offer. From the sticky mud at the ford of the Jabbok to the dark and cold moon on the other side of the universe, all praise and glory to you now and forever. We ask these things in the name of Christ, who died and who arose to redeem all creation. Amen. As we reflect on the gifts of God, we are thankful for the gift that God has given us by being, letting us be ministry partners with Trinity Day School. As I told you earlier in the service, church council this past week uh, unanimously adopted Trinity Day School's plan for reopening in the safe and appropriate ways given uh, by leadership by Christy. But one of the things that we know that they're going to need as they wear masks, as they're going to need hand sanitizer and wipes for surfaces is that this is more than the normal amount of cleaner and things that they would need in a year. So church council has authorized a special offering for Trinity Day School. We invite you this day through uh, the online apps or through a mail-in check, however you wish to do it, to make a donation to the Trinity Day School Restart. And you could put that in the memo item of your check. And all funds that you give will be used this coming school year to pay for those items that they need to restart the day school. We're thankful for Trinity Day School, and we're thankful that we have an opportunity to share with them what God has so graciously given us. And that is true of all the gifts that we receive here at Trinity. We are thankful for you and for the ways that you give to make this ministry of this church continue. And so at this time, I invite you to reflect on the gifts of God in your life and in the life of our church and world. May we pray.
God, we give you thanks for the ministry of the Trinity Day School. For over three decades, lives have been changed. We have extended blessings through that school to places and people in Sumter and beyond. We're thankful for our director, Christy. We're thankful for the teachers and staff that work with her. We pray, O oh Lord, for uh, their health and safety this year for the gifts that you have given us for that ministry and for the gifts that you have worked through us to give for places in our world that need your attention, we give you thanks. Bless the giver and bless the gift that all may be done to your glory and honor. These things we ask in your name, O Lord, for you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. now in the map of your life, go and seek Jesus. Be ready for the Lord's appearance in the twinkling of an eye, in the song of a bird, in the handshake or fist bump of a friend. Know that God will meet you wherever you are, for God is on your map. Go now and be God's children wherever you may go. Amen. Mm -hmm.